In this video, we'll look more at the concept of derivatives of piecewise functions and study in a little bit more depth the idea of differentiability. Let's look at this example. f of x is 2x for x less than 1, x squared plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 1. Here's a picture of the graph. It's 2x for x less than 1, it's x squared plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 1. Like before, we can say that the derivative for x less than 1 is the derivative of 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative for x greater than 1 is the derivative of x squared plus 1, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. But this time, if we look at the graph, it looks like the tangent line from this side, which is just 2x, is the same as the tangent line from this side, 2x. That is, it looks like it has a common tangent there, or a common slope, which suggests that it might be actually differentiable there. So let's investigate the question, is f of x differentiable at x equals 1? That is, is the slope the same? Well, remember how we find slope or in, in terms of the definition of the derivative. So let's go back and think about the definition of the derivative. Remember we used the difference quotient. So we have f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1. And we want to consider the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus 1 over x minus 1. And remember the definition of limit, if we go back and think about the description of limit, a limit exists if the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both exist. So we look at our difference quotient, f of x minus 1, f of 1 over x minus 1, and we take the left and right-hand limits, and we see if they're the same. If so, the limit of the difference quotient will exist, and the function will be differentiable. And we need to do this from the left and the right, because we have different functions from the left and the right. So all we have to do is work out these two calculations and see if they turn out to be the same. And if they do, we'll have shown, we'll have proven that the function is differentiable at x equals 1. So let's look at this one first. So f of x for x greater than 1 is x squared plus 1. f of 1, we evaluate f of 1 using this piece of the function. When we put in 1, we get 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. So this is x squared plus 1 minus 2. The denominator is still x minus 1. So we simplify this, and we find out that this will reduce to 2x. There's a little bit of intermediate algebra here. You can fill in the details. And the limit as x goes to 1 of 2x is just 2. Now let's look at this piece. The limit as x goes to 1 from below of f of x minus 1, f of 1 over x minus 1. Well, that's equal to limit as x goes to 1 from below. In for f of x, we put 2x, because when x is less than 1, for x going to 1 from the left, we look for x less than 1, so we use 2x. So in for f of x, we put 2x. For f of 1, we again go back to this part of the function. x equals 1 means that we use 2. So we use this piece of the function again when we evaluate f of 1, and the value turns out to be 2. So that 2 is the same in both cases, because we're always using this value at x equals 1. But we have different parts of the function. And so in this case, the limit again just turns out to be 2. You can just factor out 2, and the x minus 1s will cancel. So we have a 2 from both places. That means, yes, this function is differentiable. And in our rule for the derivative, we can include the greater than or equal to 1 here. That is, it is differentiable at 1. So we can actually say that f prime of x is equal to 2 for x less than 1 and 2x for x greater than or equal to 1, because in this case, it's differentiable. We've shown that using the definition of the derivative, and you can see that on the picture because the slopes match. That's uh, the concept of differentiability using examples of piecewise functions to illustrate the idea.